as my time in Saigon draws to a close, I wanted to put together a list in no particular order of 10 must eat dishes that I think you have to seek out on your next trip to Saigon. Along this journey, I'm joined by a couple of my very good friends as we eat our way across Saigon. Let's go. I'm on the way to the airport, but I had to stop and get some gom tam before I went. This is probably the thing I've been looking forward to most, barbecue grilled with rice. This is like the traditional workers food with the broken rice. The broken rice was the rice that the farmers couldn't sell. So it's traditionally cheap, affordable food, lots of protein, lots of carbohydrates, workers food, as you know, manual workers. So uh, this is gonna have a special place in my heart, I can tell. They gotta try their chad, their like meatloaf. Like, you gotta get a fried egg. I know it's like egg on egg, but I love it. We'll get their signature, which is their grilled pork chop. I've never had their fried chicken because I get so hungry for this. I get here so early, they're not selling it yet. So, I'm gonna be patient this time, wait for it to get fried. I'm gonna get a piece of that. But yeah, so here they specialize in the pork chop and the fried chicken. But it's all the side dishes as well. So, you can pick, you can have um, so much different stuff. You can have the runny fried egg, you can get it with the shredded boiled pork fat, you can get it with that steamed egg cake, you can get it with the uh, shumai, which is the pork meatball, and that's got an egg wrapped in it. You've got your salad, you've got this other dish with like pork belly and eggs, you've got loads of stuff. That scallion oil here, the spring onion oil is just unbelievable. Every single dish I've had it on, I've enjoyed. The pickled vegetables, this is just a great dish, and it's one of them where each different shop in Saigon will do a couple of different things different, so you can go and check each one out and decide which one's your favorite. The history of this dish is very unique because it started as the uh, poor man's dish, the farmer's dish, couldn't sell it, just wanted to try to make as much profit as it could. So eat things they can't sell. Hello. Yeah, come on, come yeah. But when it moved to Saigon, it kind of has that Saigon flair to it. Now when you go to a Kam Tam spot, like everybody does something different. Everybody's trying to add the next thing to it. Like it's, it, even before traditionally, didn't even have the pork chop and things like that. But a traditional Saigon version would be the pork chop, the pork skin, and then the actual chow, which is like a, a type of like Vietnamese egg, rice, casserole. I mean, many things can be thrown into there. It's, but then it's evolved. We can get more things. I'm gonna get mine with fried chicken. We're gonna get a nice runny, almost fried, kind of Thai style egg. And here we go. Come on, go yeah. This is Gary's right here. So this is kind of a typical version. I didn't get, oh yeah, I did get the uh, shredded pork skin as well. So this would be a kum tam sung bi cha. So very traditional. We got extra, actual fried scallions and oil. That pork belly fat on top. You see that beautiful grilled caramelized pork chop on top. The fried runny egg. The reason I love it here is, I think the Thai people, they do a great fried egg. This one, man, the runny yolk on the inside. It's got that crispy bits on the outside. It's just as good. Get the cha here. It's kind of unique here. They don't use rice, but instead use a glass noodle. They got carrot in here and they've steamed it. So it almost gives you like a chawamushi, like a Japanese style steamed egg. It's gonna be silky, soft, tofu-like. Little pickled daikon radish and carrot. Just such a great plate of food. Okay. Uh, yeah, home, come on. Mama. And then you got the fish sauce on right here. And then they got that Gary style size chili right there. All right, guys, finally a smoothie that I can get on with. So you, what you do is you're gonna add that to your fish sauce and then you pour it on there, boom. Right, so just pounded chilies and fish sauce, and then just on top. Yeah, you can add as much as you want. I, I add a little bit. You can start. like move the pork chop over and put it on your rice. You yeah, want yeah. that mixed in with your rice. Yeah, so we got it's gummy, crispy on the outside, gummy runny yolk. I'm gonna try that first, actually. It's almost like deep fried. You've got that crispy, crunchy bottom, perfectly runny, gummy egg. I'm gonna go in with a pork chop. I'm gonna take this bit off. This is the favorite part of a pork chop, obviously, as you know, because that's the fat. 
a little bit of that pork skin as well. Some of those chilies, soy sauce, the little egg cake, bottoms up. Man, so much flavor on that pork chop. We've got garlic, lemongrass, soy sauce and fish sauce. It's just a salty, sweet, smoky, crispy pork chop. You've even got like the flat bits on it. We don't get this in Thailand. See, in Thailand they'll cut all this off with scissors, but obviously being English, I still do miss a good barbecued piece of pork. It's almost got like a, it's almost got a more Bing flavoring, like sugar, soy sauce, fish sauce, as I said, and a little bit of garlic. It actually does taste quite similar to more Bing. And if you know how much I love more Bing, you'll know why I love this dish. All right, guys, so texturally, we've got so much going on here. You've got that firm grilled pork chop. You've got the, You've got like the soft, springy, where it's been steamed, it's quite a springy egg. Also got the little chunks of pork fat going through there. You've got these crispy, crunchy little gubbins of pork fat. Crunchy, crispy, pickled veg. And then you've got that firm, shredded pork skin. Mm. These are incredible. Anyone who knows me knows that crispy pork fat is my kryptonite. As I said, so much going on textually, so much flavor in here. I think the words I would use to describe this is the honest, hard working food. I like this guy shirtless. I might go shirtless. <laughs> You're gonna go shirtless for this I one? might do, yeah. I don't wanna get banned from YouTube. <laughs> Come on. Mm. Mm. Super, super fresh. Texturally, these are amazing. Like when you get these in England or America, Thailand, wherever I've had them, they're usually like really gloopy. Where, where we, um, you know, you get the super hard rice baby sheets, you've got to dip them in water, they go a bit gloopy and stuff, but these, they're so fresh. All you have to do is give them a little spray with some water, and wrap them up, as we saw earlier. Really interesting salad in here. We've got some, we've got some sweet basil, some Thai basil. Very, very nice. We've got uh, some prawns in there, that pork floss. Uh, yeah, very, very good. Mm. Oh, it's supposed to chaya, 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 yeah, yeah. Chai -ya. Chai -ya. Well. Thank you so much. The shrimp inside because I didn't see them put it in, but they're little yeah, shrimp. Yeah. Of the fried spring rolls with that, you're gonna wrap it in the lettuce leaf. Yeah, boy. Genius. Next up, I'm gonna try one of my favorite things in the world, which is the chaya Vietnamese spring rolls. Now I hate. I absolutely, I don't despise them, but I'm not a big fan of Chinese or Thai spring rolls, but Vietnamese spring rolls, I love. I'm gonna wrap this in the lettuce he just gave me with one of those jilloy leaves and also the Thai basil, and we're gonna go in with the Nok Tam, which is the Vietnamese dipping sauce. This one's got garlic, sugar, chilies, fish sauce, water, 50% water, and some sort of souring agent. I have a lime or vinegar, I'd imagine. Mm. Oh yes. This is why I love spring rolls so much in Vietnam. Prawns and pork, and then that hickama again, that chine, adding a little bit of prawns and pork, and then that hickama again, that chine, adding a little bit of sweetness and texture. We've got mushrooms in here, woodier mushrooms, and of course, that lovely fatty pork. Mm. Crispy, crunchy, rich because they're deep fried, but then as with all dishes in Vietnam, pretty much all dishes in Vietnam, you've got that 
fresh veg and salad just to lift everything up. That sweet and sour, spicy sauce, again, just to cut that richness. And perhaps the thing I love most about these are the fact that they also include crab meat. So you've got that sweet crab meat, sweet prawn meat, fatty pork mint. These are something else. The crab and the chive together is like a match made in heaven. I wish my wife loved me as much as crab loves shiny chives. Enough about what I think. What does my man Joe Parilla think of the bun me and the spring rolls? Well, let's start with the spring roll because it's sat in my hand. So dip it into some of that sweet Vietnamese dipping sauce. You literally just gave it to me, did Oh, did I? Try. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> he loves them that much. He hands me the spring roll and then asks where they've gone. <laughs> I mean, he's already eaten three. Anyway, I tell you what, these summer rolls are good and perfect for the heat like this on a hot day, but those fried spring rolls are something else. Flavor profile, crunch, texture with that dipping sauce, top notch. The banh mi, had a few banh mi now in Saigon. The friendliness of them, the willingness to show us around the shop, and the taste of that banh mi, oh man. That's the best I've had so far. What I do is I usually just go through, cut it, use both chick chopsticks and cut across. Nice and crispy, nice southern style. See how flaky that edge gets right there? It's good stuff. Not as crispy as the other one because like she does have that coconut in there, but still good. So now we get it ready. I usually get a base. So it's either the salad or this for the base. I always yeah, use yeah. this. I just think this is a little more flavorful. And you can go through and pick what and is lay this? it on how you want. This is the mustard, mustard green. Ah, yeah. So like you just pretty much go through and make it how you want. You can do a little fralia. You can do, I mean, really anything and everything here. I just kind of do a little bit of everything. I kind of usually like hold it down with my thumb and place here and place more. Slowly do a little yip cast, one of my favorites. I'm looking for the this right here. It's the Amberelia. But this actually has like a sour flavor. Try it out. Let's try this. It's like sour. Mm, very soft. It's very stemmy. Oh, I see you hit the stem. Yeah, it's very stemmy and very like hard and woody. Yeah. That tastes like something English. So I just get like a little mint with mine too because it's going to be so fatty and so heavy. You can get actually some like coriander if you like that soapiness as well. And then what I do is you just now go for your bun sale or the bun kong, whatever you want to go for. I'll go for the bun sale to show you now. Literally, since she gives you so much vegetable, you can sit here and just really, really pile it on. Make it humongous. And it's all about wrap and roll from here. Yes. All right, let me get in on this. All right, guys, so I'm going I'm to try this, this crispy plant. Bang Kong. Bang Kong. Close enough for me. All right, so it was amazing how she cooked these. Super, super crispy, quite gelatinous on the inside, and then you've got these, these, these soft little mung beans. So I'm going I'm to crack this all open. I'm going to wrap it exactly like Max wrapped the Bunciao. Um, mustard green. I'm going to go mustard green. We would usually cook these where I live. Like I've never really, I don't think I've ever eaten a... a Anytime you like mm. crab stuff, like I like it so much more than the salad or the lettuce. Yeah, yeah. All right, same thing, right? Going for the Joe Parilla leaf. Mint. I love those like a lot. Yeah, yeah. Just get get a little bit of everything for me. Do you like your cat? The oh, yeah. fish work? Yeah, I like everything. You, there's not a vegetable or a herb I wouldn't eat. Right. You gotta have some spearmint. Yeah. There. Where's that crazy other? Oh, bit? you need to get down here. I want, you know you probably want some Thai basil and stuff. It's down the bottom. This is another love mint one for you. Yes. You even got your basil. Your Thai basil. Bro. That's alright. I've had enough Thai basil in my life. 
All right, so I'm just going to put two of those in. You've got the whole prawn there. And I'll try the rest of that by itself. Ah, uh, you got to have the lacquer. Oh, okay. Is that the, that's the sour one? No, 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 this is different. It's called lacquer. I don't know what it is. Because... It's uh, it is what it is. All right, and we're gonna dip and we're gonna go. It's really, really soft, almost creamy in the middle. Those mung beans are giving you that kind of creamy consistency. Super, super crunchy, rich, oily on the outside, but that oiliness is balanced as always with these super fresh herbs. If you just ate one of these by itself, or say you ate two of these by themselves, it might be a little bit too much, I might be a bit too rich, too heavy. But with the herbs, with the dipping sauce, again, everything freshened up, everything's lifted. It's a top dish. Yeah, as ever with these things, I have overwrapped, so it's not going to go perfectly. More like a fat cigar, but let's try it. Yeah, I thought weed was legal in Thailand, man. <laughs> you wrapped that terribly. <laughs> mm. Oh man. First thing you get is the crunch of the bangkong, and then you get the softness and the starchiness of the mung beans in there, because there's quite a few in there, so you get the mushy starchiness from the mung beans, the sweetness from the prawn, and then that rich, juicy pork mince in there, but the textures, the crunch of the outside, the softness of the inside, and then the contrast of the richness from the Bangkok, and then that's just cut straight through by the freshness of those herbs. All right, I need to try this. I'm gonna wrap it exactly the same. Now, I've had these before a loads of times. I can actually get these where I live, and they're actually pretty good, but I've never had them with mung beans before. And Max tells me that's, that's a Mekong Delta thing. Is it? The mung beans are just a... Everybody will do it different. Different, right, 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 right. All right, brilliant. So we've got the pork, we've got the prawn, we've got the caramelized onions. And I'm about to show Max how, we, how you actually meant to wrap one of these. Stop, no. Stop, no. Looks like you're doing a diaper. You must have a second kid on the way. <laughs> All right, into, into my little mum. I prefer that to that, and I really liked the first one. The bung siao is, is a little bit more meat. Again, it's rich, it's fatty, but it's super, super crispy, really, really thin. Again, the fattiness, that oil is being cut with the herbs, being cut with the pickled veg and the fish sauce, dipping sauce. Prefer this, much lighter, much crispier. Much more to my taste, and as Joe said with the bang kong, the sweet prawn with that nice batty pork, in this case, sliced belly, the creamy mung beans, nice semi-crunchy bean sprouts. They've been slightly cooked in the pancake, but they have still retained a little bit of crunch, a little bit of freshness. So much herbs, again. This would have to go into, I'd definitely into my top 10, maybe my top five Vietnamese dishes. So the core is the crab. crab, and it's kind of all going through the sauce already. Yeah, and then you have pieces of little crab meat over there already. Wow. All right, guys, so we've got, we've got pork, we've got picked crab, quail's eggs, some sort of peppery sausage, some fish balls, some prawns. Ah, and you know my kryptonite, guys, Hom Giao.
So a bangkai noodle is actually a mixture of a rice flour. There's a few different ways you can make it, but typically gonna be a rice flour mixed with a tapioca. And you can tell these have always been soaked in that broth because some of that actually tapioca starch, as long as with a little bit of addition, has gotten into the soup base. That's why it's got that gloopiness to it. It's got that texture. It's just a, it's a, it's a warm, hearty, down home texture and dish right here. That's why I only been here three years and they're selling from eight in the morning to 8 p.m. Very rare in Vietnam to see somebody selling that long and to be doing that much business after just three years of opening. So that means they're like hyper popular for how long they've been open, right? We're getting super popular. And for me, it's just like all the fish and the seafood in here so well. I love that the crab is already picked for you. It's spread all throughout the base. You can see little pieces of dried shrimp in here. So it's just adding to that flavor of this broth. It's a very flavorful broth. You just, it's not sweet. It's really packed with the umami and the textures are on point for down home comfort for Vietnamese. We've got what looks like Thai mu yo, which looks like a pork sausage, but Max has told me if it's orange on the side, you know it's a crab sausage. And then we've got, we've got a couple of prawns, a couple of large prawns, shell on. Look how gloopy these noodles are, guys. Now, we've also got this thick, gelatinous, soup with pieces of crab going all the way through it. She's also topped it with actual pieces of white crab meat, claw meat. And uh, I can't use a spoon with noodles, so I'm gonna pick these up with my chopsticks. If you get real like bun cam with lots of tapioca, they only give you a spoon. Oh really? Yeah. Right, you're immediately hit with that crab flavor. The second flavor I'm getting is from the fried shallots. So I know I keep harping back onto the, the Thai and Lao soup, but it's got that flavor, it's got like the the fried shallots are just permeating through the whole soup. So you've got, it's kind of like a, off the bat, it's like a salty, crabby French onion soup kind of vibe. We're gonna pimp this up, guys. So, lime juice. I love the fact you just get loads and loads of wedges of lime on your bowl here. So I'm actually gonna go I'm actually going to go two wedges and then let's get some more of this pounded red chilli. The lime's lifted it and the chilli is actually kind of, it's kind of half fermented so it's got a kind of sour note to it as well. A bit like a bit like I'd get in my favorite duck shop back in Bangkok. Right, another thing I absolutely love about Vietnam, quail's eggs and everything. Mmm. I thought these were gonna be hard. They're actually quite soft in the middle. The noodles are like squidgy, but chewy at the same time. Really comforting, soft but gelatinous. The crab's delicious. I love the fact that there's crab like broken up all through the soup. So the main flavor of the soup, even if you didn't have the crab pieces, would be crab crab and onion. So this is Bun Rio Tofu. So I get that Bun Rio that is really, really famous for having that fried tofu in it. You see you got some fried tofu pieces right here. Uh, you got some chan luo, which is a Vietnamese style sausage, the hui, which is a blood key. We have many different types. I don't know what type they actually use here. I'm sure it's, if they're making a pork bone broth base, I'm sure it's probably gonna be pork. But people don't usually do that, so maybe cow. Uh, and then we get the real. The real is that combination of the pounded crab, pork, sometimes, you know, shrimp, but it's gonna have the egg in there. And that, right. So that's why it's going all clumpy, because of the egg, right? Yeah, the egg, the egg's the binder. So when you eat bun rio, chilies, of course, uh, but it's really famous for having uh, mum thumb, which is a fermented shrimp paste. So this is the, guys, this is the Thai, I mean, sorry, this is the Vietnamese version of kapi. Look at that. Whoa, the smell of this. That's funky. I like it. If you don't have 
Mom Tom. Huh? Mom Tom. And then some chili in there. If you don't have the Mom Tom and the chili in here, like you're just not eating Moon Rail. Alright, alright. It should already have a little bit like in the broth anyways. I like a little bit of acid in it. I actually like the water spinach the best, the way it's shaven. It's better when it's steamed. They're super crazy right now, so I'm not gonna bother them. But I like it when it's really steamed. Okay. And you get to put it in here. I think the steamed like water spinach in this is the best. They're like real, the crab cake is sort of broken up. Cause we've got the end of the, we've got the end of the session here. Sundays is the most popular day here. So they just, when they run out, they run out. And cause we've come at the end, we kind of got the end of the broth. So everything's broken up and mixed all through the soup. And I kind of prefer that. Because you're getting like that crabby paste in pretty much every bite. But there's some bits and pieces on the table, so we're gonna pimp this up. Alright, so this is the mum Mum Tom. Mum Tom, which is their version of our kapi in Thailand. But this is a lot more purple in colour, and if you'd believe it, probably smells even worse to some. Ooh. I personally love it. The other thing I'm gonna stick in, see, I, I never knew what these were. Obviously I knew they were chilies. When I used to come to Vietnam, the first couple of times I came, I thought there was something else to it, but it is literally just pounded red chilies. So we're gonna go with that. Also guys, I'm gonna put in a little bit of a uh, pig bon, or I don't know how to say it here, but dried red chili flakes. I want to add two levels of heat. I want to add like a deep, rich heat from the dried chilies. I also want to hit that fresh red chili heat. We've chucked in some lime juice already, and then Max showed me the way to do it in the south. Before you've done anything to your soup, is to actually squeeze the lime and then rub it on your chopsticks and your spoon before you even start eating. And if you don't do that, you're just a foreigner. We had a look at that, guys. We've got some shredded Water spinach. Water spinach. Uh, we call it pak bung in Thailand. This is pak bung as in pad pak bung, but here they've just got it raw and shredded. The only other place I've ever seen this like this is in a quick yao tom yum shop that I did uh, in Bangkok a few weeks ago. I've also got some lettuce, and this is one of the, my favorite things about Vietnam and Vietnamese soups is the amount of herbs and different things you get to freshen it up yourself. There's one thing I will say about Thailand that we don't have enough of is the fresh veg and herbs. All right, tofu. Now for anyone who doesn't like tofu, my recommendation would be to get it fried in a soup. Because it is like a sponge. It's like a deep fried sponge that soaks up all the juices, all the goodness from the soup, whatever you're eating. And the crisp on the outside, puffed up in the middle, nice and soft. It's taken on all the flavor of the soup. I love the noodles. I love the fresh rice noodles here. Even though we've left them in the soup for a little while, they've still got a little bit of bite to them. Mm. They barely cook them. Because they're fresh, all she does, she's putting them into a little noodle basket, dipping them for two seconds just to kind of break them up um, so they don't go clumpy, then into the soup. The broth, now we've added that shrimp paste, we're just giving you that funky, for want of a better word, umami. Yeah, so the pot's light. Um, it's light and it's sweet, but it's it, it's not sweet from like added sugar. It's not like that one where it coats your mouth and you can tell they've just added loads of palm sugar, rock sugar. It's sweet, kind. it's sweet, I think, from the tomatoes. Like we've got no actual tomatoes in our broth, but I'm, I'm told that's because like we were right at the bottom of the, of the pan, but yeah, it's got like a natural sweetness and a little bit of acidity from the tomatoes and sweetness from the crab as well. Guys, this looks phenomenal, or phenomenal. Let's okay. go take a look. All right, so let me look through this bowl here. So we got some, we got some fresh stewed beef on top, but that's not what I'm interested in. I'm interested in this fatty, braised brisket. We had this yesterday in a, in a bun bar, which was unbelievable. So I'm, I've got high hopes for this. Clean looking broth. Just topped with some spring onions. But 
as Max said, this looks to be the real star of the show, right? Scallion oil, or spring onion oil, as I would call it. With beef fat. So we're gonna pour that into our soup. Add some of our herbs. So we've got some Thai basil, we've got some mint, we've got some sawtooth coriander. We've got some of those inferno chilies that I ate yesterday and uh, started to regret it instantly because these look like they're not going to be spicy but actually they're unbelievably spicy but anyway we'll put a few in It's clean, it's clean, it's fresh. Even without anything in, you've got like a, like a deep, a deep beef flavour. There's a lot of fat in this. Heavy, heavy on the fish sauce. It's simple. I'm not getting like a heavy hit of any kind of spice, it's like, when I picture fur, I, I, like the fur I've eaten in Saigon, I'm, when I'm eating it, I'm hit, getting like a massive hit of cinnamon, cardamom. But with this, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really getting that. I'm just getting a clean, rich, beefy broth. All right, in with the lime. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go try basil. In. Yeah, a little bit of sawtooth coriander. I love the fact in Vietnam I can just get my head over the bow and slap. I don't have to put it onto my. There's something so comforting as well about the squidgy, soft, fresh rice noodles. You can't beat a good, fresh, springy noodle. But what I really came here for was the brisket. After my man took me for some uh, brisket yesterday, look at that perfectly stewed, soft, flaky piece of brisket just surrounded with that soft, soft beef fat. It's fatty, it's soft. It reminds me a little bit of like a... Only UK people are gonna get this reference. Salt beef, like a cross between salt beef and an English roast dinner. Mm. Right. I'm gonna have a little dip in the chili sauce. It's not bad. It's not bad. I don't personally think it needs it. The beef's so juicy, so succulent, so fatty. I don't think it really needs anything. For me, for me, all I'm going to need is that lime juice, the delicious broth, and this fatty scallion oil. I'm not going to eat all the fat because Max will be Max will be annoyed. So I'm pretty sure this isn't pure beef fat. So canola oil, beef dripping, and scallions. And I promise you guys, this is just, this is like liquid crack. Like I love your fried onion, your fried scallion oil here anyway, right? But this, as we say in England, that's just taking the piss. Like, I cannot explain to you how rich this is. If someone said to me, what does beef taste like? Explain beef. Eat that, basically. It's rich, it's quite heavy. Once you put the oil in, it's quite heavy, but I like that. Every mouthful you get, your like, whole mouth coated in either 
scallion oil or beef fat or a combination of both. So the mouthfeel of this soup, insane. These ladies been here 27 years. They're throwing our little bowls of delicious noodles together. Let's go take a look. So you get two sticks of the grilled pork. Some of that spring onion oil. This is my jam. Peanuts, the pickled daikon and carrots. And don't worry. Guys, as I said, no trip to Saigon for me would be complete without a stop here. I absolutely love this place. This is bringing back so many memories for me. I want to show you exactly what we've got in the bowl. First of all, you've got the titnum, which is the grilled barbecue pork. Soy sauce, sugar, fish sauce, lemongrass. It's salty, it's smoky. Big hit of lemongrass on that. The guy's back there cooking over charcoal on this little barbecue and we just asked him, or Max just asked him, and he said that he makes 500 skewers per day. This is a quiet day. All right, we've got some peanuts, some scallion oil, spring onion oil, which is like one of my favorite things in the world. We've got the pickled carrots and daikon, and then we've got the Vietnamese chai yao, which are the spring rolls. That's all on top of Rice noodles, kind of the same rice noodles we just had in the bun reel. These are a little bit closer to Kandom Jean. Fresh rice noodles, so they're kind of sour, bouncy. All right, guys, so I'm gonna put on a bit of this Nok Mum, which is the classic Vietnamese dipping sauce, but look how thick that is. So it's sugar and fish sauce. Mix all that up, look, we've got the crunch and the peanuts. We got that beautiful oil coating all the noodles. You got the crunch, sort of sweet and sour taste from the vegetables. And what I love most about this is the fact that all these, all the black charred flavor is still on the grilled pork. In Thailand, we don't have any of this. In Thailand, they cut it off because they think it gives you cancer. So. so I said the star of the show was the pork. Actually, maybe the star of the show is the chai yar, the spring rolls. We've got fatty pork, we've got woody mushrooms, We've got some monkey owl, which is cassava and a little bit of onion and some sweet crab meat. So these are just a level above pretty much any other spring roll I've had. Crispy, crunchy, heavily seasoned. Max just asked me if I wanted one or two spring rolls and because we're going on like a big mad food tour, I said one, I think I might get him to get me some takeaway. And the other thing I love, again, about this dish is, as I said with the Bun Riao, the amount of fresh herbs and vegetables you get in here. So you've got sliced up, diced up cucumber and I just love the way auntie over there was cutting it. She wasn't even looking at it, she was going brrrr, slicing bit after bit after bit and her job was just to put the vegetables and the herbs in the bowl with the noodles, pass it on and then she fills the bowl up with the rest of the stuff. But we've got Thai basil, we've got some lettuce in here, we've got some beef steak uh, plant, and we've also got some bean sprouts. You've got crunch from the peanuts. So texturally, great dish. I love the fact you can just get pounded up red chilies on the table. Now, a lot of people have commented that, I remember the last video I did here, although not a lot of people watched it because it was before I had a lot of subscribers, a lot of people were saying to me and have messaged me since and I thought you didn't like sweet stuff. The, the not mum there is very sweet. Now, I don't like sweet things if they're not balanced, but if it's as balanced as this is, so it's sweet, it's salty, it's sour, and then you've got the smoke coming from the pork, you've got the crunch, fatty, sort of oily spring rolls, it's all balanced, it all goes together perfectly. Still one of my favourite dishes in Saigon. Bunba. Xin chào. Xin chào. All right, so we're back. I came here and did a live yesterday, so she remembers me from yesterday. I wish you could smell this stock, guys. 
all I can smell is like heavy, heavy shrimp paste, lemongrass. The colour of this. Yeah, we've got some pandan in there. I think some winter melon as well. So yesterday I came and I got some different pieces of beef. I think she's giving me a mixed bowl today. All right, so yeah, so these are the pieces. I'll try and show you in a minute. Now I'm trying to work out where this is from, which part of the cow this is from, because the pieces in the window almost look like beef jerky. It looks like they sort of, I mean, they're cooked down, but they look almost dried. And then she pops them in the, back in the soup and they like kind of like rejuvenate, rehydrate if you want, and they kind of puff up. Um, so I think it's, it's near the belly, near the brisket, but back towards the ribs, I think. But anyone who can correct me, please do, because we've got a piece of bone here. We've got a piece of bone here. To me, it looks like the spine, looks like the back of the cow. But anyway, we know it's going to be full of flavour. We've got some cha lua, the Vietnamese sausage. Those bun that I showed you earlier, some spring onions, some sautéed coriander, and that beautiful, beautiful soup. Look at the colour of that. Right, and then we've got our herbs. So we've got blanched bean sprouts and morning glory or water spinach. And then this, uh, at first, I thought it was Thai basil. It's definitely not. It's, uh, it's a type of mint. We're going to call it Vietnamese mint. If anyone can tell me what this is actually called, uh, thank you so much. Okay, and with any uh, bun bò, you're going to get satay. Satay is um, not what we call satay in where I'm from. This is a spicy mix of dried chilies, loads and loads of lemongrass, shallots, and garlic. So we're going to add a nice dollop of that in. We've also got, as always, some fresh limes. So let's, let's go in with those. We're going with two. Then some chilies in fish sauce. Let's get it all mixed up. I have made such a mess here. Right, I'm gonna put these two beef bones on there for a minute. I'll chew those afterwards. And we'll go for a piece of that soft. I'm gonna say brisket. They're soft, but there's a bite to it because it's like a there's like a layer of sinew around the beef, which may, that's why I thought it might have been the middle of a piece of beef rib but i don't think it is i think it's a cut i'm unfamiliar with but i think it's a cut near the brisket but there's there's a really hefty amount of like connective tissue but it's obviously been stewed down for hours so it is literally so so soft with the most incredible beef flavor imaginable the reason I love bun ba so much, as opposed to say pho, for instance, is just how complex the soup is. Heavy, heavy, heavy on the lemongrass. It's spicy. It's got a big, big hit of mum tom, which is shrimp paste. It's got the most amazing, savoury flavour, but it's also, as I said, spicy, a little bit acidic, a bit of the beef bone. And this is why I think it's like, come off the sort of back this looks like to me like a bit of spine but we'll see we know that this is going to be full of flavor look you've got that lovely piece of fat on the corner anything this close to the bone is going to be absolutely packed full of flavor not only is it absolutely melt in your mouth it's actually taken on all the flavors from the soup so it's like a lemon grassy citrusy piece of beef fat mm. 
Unbelievable. Right, it's been grilling away now for a little bit. Look at the colour on that, the caramelisation, look at that. I'm chasing her. Now he's hovering around, look. Hovering around waiting for a tip more. She dropped one, that's why. How oh, did she? Oh man, I wish I spoke Vietnamese. Wow, this looks incredible. So we get half and half. You get the lemongrass beef and then Oh, you got the onions with the pork fat, coriander. This, I think he needs the camera. So, so I got number one? Come on. Ban mi kolan. Yes. All right, guys. So, like I said in the intro, I, I don't just want to go and get any old ban mi, right? I want to go and get a special ban mi. And as you saw from the carnage, if you saw what I was hoping to show you from the carnage inside, right? We have a very, very special ban mi. Now, I'm not sure which one's which. Yeah, this is mine because it's got more uh, chilies in than Joe's. All right, so we've got the beef patties, uh, stuffed with lemongrass, onions, garlic, uh, a little bit of salt. I think she said, and some fish sauce. And that's just been left to marinate and then grilled over that rotisserie grill, those hot coals. So there should be some epic flavor on those. We now, we've got this shumai. Shumai in Vietnam means meatball. And this is a very fatty meatball with a turnip called hikama, onions and a salted egg yolk. We've also got some coriander on there, spring onion oil, but that oil was made with, the spring onion oil was made with lard, as you saw. So I'm gonna break this in half and then I'm going to, Take my first bite of a bun me in 2023. There you go, I'm a poet and I didn't even know it. Oh, look at that. Don't know which one to go for first. I'm gonna go for the beef first because that's the one I've been looking forward to most. Also got some pickled radish, some pickled daikon and some carrots. Oh, yes. We've also, that sauce that she, see the sauce she ladled on that I thought was gonna be really, really sweet. It's actually like a cinnamony kind of barbecue sauce. Mm. Heavy, heavy smoke flavor on that lemongrass beef. You've got the heat from those banana chilies shining through and a little bit of acidity and sweetness from the pickled veg. That crispy, crunchy, fluffy Saigon bread that I love so much. Mm. It's incredible. All right, next up we've got the shoe mai. Probably good for me, the sorted eggs falling off. Uh, Joe will tell you what that's like in a sec. <laughs> Where this one's been braised, as opposed to grilled, you don't have the smokiness, but what you do have is a really soft, succulent meatball. I love the way in Vietnam they grate the onion into the, the mix, and you get that oniony flavor like permeating all the way through the meatball. Super soft, super delicious, the ultimate comfort food. That's insane. I do prefer the beef one, but I'd happily just eat that. These little pieces of the turnip, the radish, the hickama, coming through, giving you a little bit of sweetness and also a nice bit of texture as well. That for me, guys, it's probably because I haven't had one for so long, but that is one of the best bummies I've ever had. I thought it had mayonnaise butter on it as well, but it's not. It's literally just that fatty, lard-soaked onion. If I get hit now by one of the many, many motorbikes coming past and you never see me again, I will die a very, very, Happy man. Mm. 
Oh man. There's the crunch of the crispy pork fat. Bang! I know Gary said he preferred the beef patty, but for me, I think I prefer this side. The shumai is light, it's soft, it's juicy because it's been steamed. You get the saltiness from the salted egg yolk, of course, and then the crunch, the texture, which balances so nicely with the soft shumai from that crispy pork fat. Again, with all of those pickles, the herbs, the soft fluffy bread. What a sandwich. Uh, all right, so she's got a few different things, right? Yeah, so, uh, balalok. Balalok. so it's beef seasoned with lemongrass, pepper and fish sauce, I think. This is unbelievable. And she's also got little grilled meatballs as well. Right, so she's going in with the lolo and then, oh, we've got a couple of little meatballs as well without the betel leaf. She's going in with some Thai basil, I believe, is it? Or Vietnamese coriander. Some of the sauce. You, satay. Satay. Lovely, and that chili oil. This, guys, is my kryptonite. Uh, so this is the shumai. Oh, that is lovely. Alright guys, let me show oh my god. Like any standard bun me, we've got that crispy flaky bread, and this is just something that no one else does like Vietnam. It's just so light and airy, especially the ones in Saigon. So light, so airy, so crispy. Reminds me, actually, I was saying this to Max yesterday, reminds me of a white English crusty roll, which I grew up eating. So I think this is like a little bit of nostalgia for me, but the filling is like nothing else. So we've got the lola grilled to absolute perfection over smoky hot coals, some cucumber, the pickled daikon, and carrot. Giving you a little bit of crunch and texture. I love the little satay sauce she's got in here thick bit of soy sauce and loads and loads of chili but without further ado guys let's break that guys we've got so much going on here these rolls or baguettes are so crispy so light so crunchy just a tiny little Wild battle wrapped beef, perfectly seasoned. It's a little bit sweet, tiny bit of bitterness coming from the leaf. It's a very hard flavor to describe if you haven't had them before, but it's slightly smoky where she's cooked it over coals. Then you've got that sweet, salty soy sauce. Got the lemongrass coming through, chili. It's oily, and then you've got the freshness from that carrots and the daikon, as I said yesterday in yesterday's video, they're not overdone here. They're not overly sweet. They're not overly sour. Just absolutely perfect. I would go as far as to say that is the best sandwich I've had in three years. Look at the color of the beef. I wasn't sure how they did that, but Max has told me it's the anato seeds, the anato seed oil. Achiote is the actual Technically, that's what it is. The, but the seeds that come out of it, they fry it off and um, it gives you this yellow, orange, red food coloring. And it's what they color bumbot away with. And we'll see that a little bit later on. My favorite thing probably about this baguette is actually the little beef meatballs, just simply seasoned, very, very salty bit of pepper and some onion going through there. Tastes like a little mini burger. Incredible, so much going on in one baguette. Get yourself down here. Okay, so only in Vietnam. This is absolutely mental. She is sitting on a little corner, grilling up her meats, serving up baguette after baguette after baguette on one of the busiest little back streets you could ever go in in your whole life. It is just, there are hundreds of bikes going past every minute. 
Um, this for me, this is Saigon. This is Vietnam. Uh, a feast for the senses. Not for the faint hearted. Starting to wish I didn't drink like seven, six percent IPAs yesterday. I'm starting to feel it, guys. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed today's video on bread. If you want to see that bum hot way that I talked about that Max is going to go and do, make sure you get over to Max's channel. He's been such a great help the last couple of days showing me around. Definitely the best foreign YouTuber in Vietnam for food, hands down. So I've been a very lucky man. Go over, check him out. I'll leave links to all his stuff in the description box below. Let me know where you want me to go next. If there's anywhere in Saigon you want me to come back and do, I will be back probably next month or the month after. But for now, get down, see this lovely auntie, get yourself an amazing bun me. La lop. <laughs>